as the Lord leads you on that. So, anyway, I, I'm excited about these uh, songs coming up, and uh, uh, I'm just delighted that uh, you've joined us. Uh, we, uh, we, we know that there's been hundreds of people actually watching uh, these, uh, these times together, and uh, as I told Amanda Gregg, uh, I don't know if it's her kids that are watching it hundreds of times just to see their mom on TV, but nonetheless, uh, we'll, we'll take the hundreds. So I want to pray with you, and then we're going to turn it over to Jennifer and the band. That's not your name, is it? <laughs> Jennifer and the band. Please Yeah, all right, let's pray with you. Father, uh, we know that you are here and you are with uh, our people in their homes, and uh, we're just, we're taking this time, these folks are taking this time, and they are, uh, they are just wanting to hear from you. Um, so, Father, I pray that you would speak to them. Uh, we need you, uh, quite frankly, more than we need our next breath. So, uh, speak to us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I prefer to be called the worship team. So, <laughs> everybody go ahead and stand up at home.
Nonetheless, um, I, like I said earlier, uh, there's uh, going to be a new normal. Not, not exactly, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think it's going to be deeper. I think that um, uh, people are going to be a lot more serious about things that are important. Um, I want to read something from <coughs> the Valley of Vision. It's a, it's a collection of Puritan prayers and devotions. And uh, when you go back to the, the, this time period, say back in the uh, 15 to 1700s, it didn't have television, it didn't have a lot of distraction. And so a lot of thought and a lot of discussions uh, were had uh, during that time. Um, but there's a prayer here. As, as you consider taking communion together with your family, um, there's, there's so much joy to be had there. Uh, whether you do it now or whether you do it, uh, you know, later today or, or even another day, um, it would be an enjoyable time for you guys. Uh, I want to read a prayer um, that was said, and it's, a, it's a, just a beautiful prayer. It goes like this. In Christ, all thy ways of mercy tend to and end in my delight. Thou didst weep, sorrow, suffer, that I might rejoice. For my joy, thou hast sent the Comforter, multiplied thy promises, shown me my future happiness, given me a living fountain. Thou art preparing joy for me, and me for joy. I pray for joy. I wait for joy. I long for joy. Give me more than I can hold, desire, or even a thought. If I weep at night, give me joy in the morning. I often disesteem thy blood and slight thy love. But can in repentance draw water from the wells of thy joyous forgiveness? Let's pray. Lord. O Christ, be to us what we so desperately need. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your holiness. Be honored as we anticipate uh, not only to sing to you these next few minutes, but to hear from you in your word. We love you. We need you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
scenes and do so many things that, that you guys aren't aware of. Uh, you've got Grant and uh, uh, Brent, uh, Baxter and Galen, and uh, you've got our secretarial folks, uh, Dot and Carol. And, uh, it's a lot of things. We have security uh, here. We have just uh, a number of people that are helping us. Um, just uh, they're very glad to do it, and it's so nice to be able to always be able to count on people, um, and they're just always there. Uh, I don't know where Eli is. Eli, is that guy? I don't know that. Eli, you cut off your hair. Let me see. Oh man, I don't know what barber he had, but uh, we need to talk to that barber because I'm just telling you that one of these days, you know, I have no idea how long my hair is going to get. Uh, when I was a teenager, it was kind of long. And it could get pretty long. You're gonna find out that I color my hair gray, and you just never know what it'll look like. So, and I don't color it gray, by the way. But nonetheless, uh, we are so glad that you joined us. Uh, we are in the Book of Philippians, as you heard Galen read. We are looking at uh, this guy, uh, this this gentleman Paul, apostle servant of Christ, and watching how, what his passions are. And so that's what, that's what I want to talk about, is I want to talk about uh, treasuring Christ. Um, and that's what Paul does. If, if you read the book of Philippians, that's all that you can uh, that's all you can see is how he treasures him. And I want to try to figure out <clears throat> with you how we can continue to treasure him together. And so before we go any further, I'd like to have a prayer with you. <clears throat> Father, um, it is in Christ's name that we come before you. Uh, thank you. I want, um, I want him to be honored. I want, when we're done, uh, people just simply want to know him. Father, uh, I pray for all of, the, all of the people that are listening, whether they're listening this morning or they're going to listen later this week or another time. I even want to pray for them. That our hearts are so drawn to you that we're we, we find ourselves looking to you like we look for our food in the morning or in the evening, or we, or we get up and we breathe. We, 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 we simply want to fellowship with you because you satisfy us. So I pray for that. I pray for a renewal and revival that would come to our church, that would come to Jonesboro, that would come around the world. Father, you, uh, you desire that every man and woman and child would hear this great name because there's no, there is not salvation in any other name in Acts 4.12. So, Father, we're asking for you to uh, just reveal to us. Just speak to us. Mm. It's good to be with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've got a couple of uh, thoughts and questions for us, um, several actually in the message. One of them is, how is God ever going to use the church when we don't even meet? How is God ever going to use the church when we don't even meet? So the answer is really kind of cool because uh, one is that God, Jesus will build his church and the gates of hell cannot stop it. So we know it's going to happen. But folks, quite frankly, the church really is the church when we leave this building anyway. Let's say that again. The church really is the church when we leave this building. The first church I ever was a part of where I became a believer, they had a sign above the doors as we went out. It says, you are now entering your mission field. And I really, I really feel like that as a church. I don't feel like I'm the minister and I'm the one who needs to run around and try to uh, you know, minister to, to everybody in the world. But you know what? I feel like we are. We're the ministers. In Ephesians 4, we are the ministers. So that answers that question. Another one is, uh, how is the church ever going to become unified if we're not meeting together? The answer is that we have one love. 
And I'll simply stop there at this point. Third question is, how will we ever become consistent in bringing glory to God? So, just like Paul said here in Philippians 3, he said, man, guys, I don't mind telling you guys, reminding you guys again and telling you this stuff again. Well, I don't mind telling you this again. In Ephesians 3, 17 to 21, here's what it says. Bottom line, I'm going to paraphrase for you. Guys, I want, I'm praying that you understand how, great, how, how, how incredible God's love is for you. I pray that you'll be able to grasp it. Okay? Uh, at that point, ready? When you grasp it, when you begin to grasp the love of Christ for you, with all of your stuff, what happens is, is that God, you'll, you'll be filled with the fullness of God. You know why? Because God is love. Watch this. Then it goes on, you read down to verse 21, and it says that, that, that because of God's work in you, because of God's work in you, what will happen is, is, that, is that Christ will be, God will be glorified, Christ will be glorified in every generation forever and ever. So that's where it begins. So this morning we are, we're talking about treasuring Christ together. We're talking about uh, discovering that he is the greatest treasure that you will ever have in your life. And so that's the prayer today, that you would grasp a hold of that, that we would grasp a hold of that. And so as we look at this in this passage, in the first three verses, uh, we find in chapter 3 that, uh, that Paul wants us to, to worship together. Paul wants us to worship in the Spirit. And he says, don't follow those guys that are the mutilators of the flesh. In other words, there are those guys who think that, man, we, uh, you, you got to be circumcised. That, that was their, that was their uh, uh, tell-all. That was the thing that told people that they were really in the Jewish faith and that they were really in the faith. And there are those who are trying to combine Christianity with Judaism. Because guys, oh, they're, they're just mutilators of the flesh. They're doing something that has no worth whatsoever. And they're trying to lead people after them. And so what we're trying to do is simply keep pointing people at Christ. He's the only one that will never let me down. And so we are people that worship a work, we have a worship that transcends buildings and ritual. We are those who have a, a worship that transcends buildings and, uh, and, and, and ritual. See, the rituals that we have here at this church, the certain things that we do, I, I think they're very good, but we don't have to have them in order to worship. They often will enhance worship, but they don't have to be within the worship. Um, Solomon said when he was dedicating the temple in 1 Kings chapter 8, when he was dedicating the temple, I'm talking about the place that man, people knew that God's presence was going to be there, and he said this. He said, look, uh, look, can God dwell in this place? I mean, the heavens, even the highest heavens cannot contain him, much less this building, this temple. He knew that. Jesus talking again in John chapter 4, and he says, look, I know that you guys think that, you know, some, are supposed to, you know, some of you believe you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. Some of you believe you're supposed to worship, worship in Samaria. But I'm going to tell you, there's coming a day, and today is, he said, that there, uh, there are those who worship in spirit and truth, and those are the ones that God is looking for. So the worship that we have transcends buildings and ritual and even days. The second thing that I want you to know, by the way, I'm going to give you four things. The second thing that I want you to know is that uh, we have a faith that is certain that we are all broken. Um, we have a faith that is certain that we are all broken. Let me, let me just, just, just so I get to the point. That's why Paul keeps pointing at Jesus, because we needed a Savior. He knew that. In fact, what he said at the end of verse 3, if you'll notice it, he said that uh, 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 we have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the flesh. In other words, we don't have anything that's, that's going to just impress God. Um, ultimately, what God wants is your heart and everything else follows. 
Ultimately, what God wants is your heart and everything else will follow. In John 6, 63, um, Jesus said, uh, the flesh counts for nothing. The Holy Spirit gives life. Isn't that great? Uh, we don't have to depend on ourselves at all. We don't have to conjure up a faith. We don't have to conjure up, uh, you know, how to feel or, or, or how to talk. We just, we just keep looking at him and we, we want him to work within our own lives. John, uh, Romans 5, 6 says uh, something similar. It says, uh, it says, while we were without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. And so that's what's going on. In fact, if you go back to chapter, uh, here in Philippians 3, 3, it says we worship God by the Spirit. We worship God by the Spirit. He even helps us to do that. The third thing I want to talk about, by the way, I've got only have four points. This is the third thing that I'm already on. Here it is. Uh, uh, in terms of treasuring Christ, when true worship is Christ centered, it begins with the emptying of oneself. When true worship is Christ centered, it begins with the emptying of oneself. I want to read these verses. I know Gabe has read them, but verse four, it goes like this. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. Remember, he just said in verse three, he says, we have no confidence in the flesh, but if anybody does, and then it goes on, he says, if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day. Everything that happened in his life, man, was just right down the line what Judaism wanted. He says, the people of, uh, of Israel, I wasn't a, a proselyte from another land. I was of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin, that's the second son of Jacob or Israel, uh, which was by his favorite wife, Rachel. I mean, this guy had some, uh, some clout here. In fact, it was uh, Judah and, and uh, Benjamin's tribe that, that, that stayed faithful to God the longest. Uh, in fact, 100 years longer than the northern tribe did. Um, he says, uh, a Hebrew of Hebrews, he says, in regard to the law of Pharisee, in other words, uh, in other words, he was of the most legalistic uh, 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 center of things. I mean, he, they, 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 they stayed right close to everything that they were supposed to do all the time and wanted everybody else to follow them. As for zeal persecuting the church, you say, why would he, why would he brag about that? Well, zeal was a uh, was a very <clears throat> very great quality, and uh, uh, if you had zeal, it meant this: you loved everything that was Jewish, and you hated everything that was not Jewish. <clears throat> he had incredible, incredible zeal. Um, he said, goes on to say. He's a, he, uh, he, per, he, as for the legalistic righteousness, faultless, okay? In other words, when it came to the legal law stuff that you could do, <clears throat> excuse me, he did it all. And so, so this was, this was where he began. He, he, he wanted, he wanted everyone to understand that he was emptying himself. Watch this, look at verse seven. But whatsoever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, watch this. And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. In other words, what he, what he was saying is that I, I, I consider all of that that I did, all of that I, that I had, that people would be impressed with within Judaism. I want you to know that uh, that stuff was worthless to me. It, was, it, it, it gave me no ground with God. And he said, in fact, he says, I don't want a righteousness of my own when I stand before him. I don't want to stand there and say, God, look what I've done. He says, look, my faith is in Christ alone. <clears throat> the righteousness that comes to me through faith. 
In other words, it goes like this. <clears throat> uh, you see, when we finally come to this place where we realize that we're, we're broken, when we finally realize that, that, that he has everything that I've ever needed, that he has everything I've ever needed to be right with God, he has everything I've ever needed to walk with God. He has everything I've ever needed to choose the right things. That's what he brings to us. As we grow in our faith, we become more and more and more aware of this, you see. It's kind of like uh, uh, the, the story that Jesus told about the Pharisee that was standing in the temple. And there was a guy back in the back. <clears throat> he, was on his, he was on his knees. And, and this Pharisee looks up at God and says, God, I thank you that I'm not like him. God, I thank you that, uh, that I give my tithe. And God, I thank you that he kind of went through this list. The guy back in the back, he, he, he didn't feel like he'd come up that close. He beat his chest and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus says, which one of those two went away righteous? Yeah, you got it. The guy that recognized his own, his own weakness. <clears throat> the guy who recognized the need that he had, you see? So the fourth, the fourth and final point that I want to come to, the fourth and final one is this. Uh, when true worship is Christ-centered, it eventually becomes manifest. It becomes obvious to those who are around. And ultimately, it is fulfilling when we gather together. Listen how, how, how this can work. You see, if you are spending time with him throughout the week, I want you to understand something. Most of worship, most of adoration, most of treasuring him is not in song. It's not in the song. That's, a, that's an ultimate experience for us. In other words, what, what, what really can happen is you treasure him throughout the week. When you get here, it's going to be hard for us to keep our voices down because we've enjoyed him so much and now we get to sing it out. I know a lot of us get to sing like in our cars and we listen to songs and stuff and we get to experience that. <clears throat> but when we come together and we gather, the ultimate experience is when we gather like this and in Ephesians, I think it's chapter 2 and verses 20 and 21, it says that we are being made into a temple. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, a, a dwelling in which God uh, dwells among us. And God wants us together. He wants us together. He wants us to gather together. There's something unique when Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. There's something unique that can happen when we gather together with other believers, whether it's with just three or four of you, whether it's just there in your home, when you're sitting there with your family, uh, the kind of experience you can have is all of you focus in on him, you see. And so what happens when we come to verse 10, and this is, again, this is my last point that I have with you. We see what it says. We see the passion that, that, uh, that Paul has here. It's incredible. In fact, um, before I, I, I go over verse 10, I just want you to see some things. For example, uh, Paul says this in these verses. He says, I consider all loss for the sake of Christ. He says, uh, the great, because of the greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Listen to this. He says, I want to do this because I want to get rid of all this stuff because I want to gain Christ. He goes on, he says, uh, he says uh, that which is through faith in Christ is this righteousness. He says, um, uh, he says, I want to know Christ. He says, in the end of verse 10, he says, I want to become like him. You follow me? Christ is the center of all that. And, and, and so we come to this. So watch this. This is an example of someone who's treasuring Christ. You ready? He says that I might know him, that I might uh, know the, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, and being made conformable unto his death. So let's talk about those. For example, he says, man, he says that I might know him. Wow, I love that. That word is an intimate knowledge. To know him is an intimate knowledge. 
We can know him and fellowship with him. And that's why there are people who fellowship with Christ and they, and they, 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 they read his word. Listen to me very carefully. They read his word and they can turn somebody on television or on the radio. And because they know his voice, I'm telling you, they know his voice. They can tell when some of these people are crackpots or not. You can. Uh, Jesus said in John 10 that, look, uh, you know, uh, my people know me and they won't follow the other guy. Uh, they'll follow me, he says in John chapter 10. And so the more you get to know him, the more you realize some of these folks are just going out on limbs and you're going, oh my gosh, that's not right. That's not even in the Bible. I'm telling you, you can hear, you can, uh, you can hear them. And uh, be, be, be knowledgeable here. Be knowledgeable about, about Christ. If you want to know Christ, know his word. If you want to know the Father, know Jesus, know his word. I'm telling you, that's where you want to start. Here's what Jeremiah said. You ready for this? This is really, really cool. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says this. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, uh, or, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts, boast about this, right? That he understands and he knows me. I'm proud of that. He goes on, he says, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness. Stop there and think about that for a while. Uh, uh, justice. In other words, he likes justice with people. Uh, uh, and, and righteousness on the earth. He wants righteousness to be in the earth. Uh, for in these things, I delight. Get to know him like that, getting to know what he says in his word, not what people say, but what you know that he says. So that's the first thing. The second is that you would know the power of God in your life, the power of his resurrection in your life. That God is gonna, God is gonna walk with you. This is, a part of, this is a part of treasuring Christ. You wanna know him, that you wanna know his power in your life, that raised him from the dead in your life. That God will, God will enable you to walk through those, those earthquakes and those, those storms. God will help you through those times. Uh, that's when uh, we get to see him best quite often. Um, those moments where uh, you need, you have nothing left and you know you need him. He's there. Watch this. The, the third thing is that we're convinced that that, that he will fellowship with us. He will fellowship with us in, uh, 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 in, in, in our sufferings, you see? He will fellowship with us. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when we have our darkest days, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to come a time, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm preparing you right now, there's going to come a time when you will uh, 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 be persecuted for that name. Um, and this, it's going to be interesting. Um, God is going to separate people. He's going to separate those who treasure him and those who were just part of a culture. Did you catch that? Those who treasure him and enjoy him and those who are just part of a culture, that's going to separate a lot of people. And I want us to be a people, I mean the entire congregation, uh, all of the people that we're in contact with, that, that Christ has actually become their treasure. The last thing I think is, is incredible. This is how we know that we treasure him, is uh, as we look at this last point especially. He says, I want to be made conformable unto his death. In other words, that you and I would become like him, that we would continue this lifestyle. Now I'm recognizing that I don't have anything to offer God, and I want him by faith, but I want to continue to walk that way. I want to continue to walk in such a way that, that I, uh, I need him to help me walk. I need him to help me to, to uh, uh, put all these things aside and not rely on myself and only him. Baptism is such a great, great uh, prayer. I look at baptism as more of a prayer than anything else. Because, pray, because the baptism, some of you guys need to get baptized. Some of you uh, may, uh, may have gotten baptized before you even knew what was going on. Uh, this is the time where you could uh, come and, and you've already gotten God's righteousness because of faith. You've already got that. But, 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 but you want to let everybody know that man, he's the one I'm following. 
You want everybody to know that that, that old past life is gone. There's a new life that's, that you started. And, and, and baptism is like that because when you go down, it's the old life that has gone away and the new life that's come. And so, uh, that, so quite frankly, worship has more to do with your lifestyle, has more to do with what you say and what you're doing than even singing songs. Singing songs is this incredible ultimate experience that we get to get together and do together and worship again, you see? And so that's what God's doing. The last thing I'm gonna share with you is this. The last thing. When he is treasured above all, these last three things, you ready? I'm not gonna spend any time talking about it. It is this. If I lose, when we know that we're treasuring Christ above all, if I lose something that's important to me, if I, if I lose, and I don't wish this on anybody, like Job, but if I lost everything, you still won't lose your joy. Oh yeah, you will for a minute, you will for a week, you will for a month, you will, might, might for a couple months, but, but because he's your treasure, you can't lose your joy. You can't, because, it's, because it is him that gives it. The second thing that I wanna say is, um, if Christ is your treasure, it will be clear to everyone around me what is my highest treasure. Thirdly and finally, if and when pressured to choose, if and when pressured to choose, my choice will always be and can only be Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry about that time because I'm telling you right now, he will give you the strength to do that. Don't even worry about it now. Don't even worry about it. He's your treasure today. He will be your treasure at that time. Let's pray together. Father, uh, I thank you for First Christian Church. I thank you that uh, these are some beautiful people. I, I, I'm thankful that I get to be around them. Um, Father, we desire that Christ is lifted up and just elevated always in this place. He's our joy. He's our peace. He's our salvation. I mean, I could go on and on. He's our redemption. He's our, we can go on and on, Father. Thank you. Uh, bless these people, I pray. In Jesus' name.